I'm going to do a part two of this cover crop. So from in the cab, I use this monitor for the GPS auto steer, which isn't super necessary with the drill. It's really hard to calibrate. This is the loop monitor that I put on the drill. There's light sensors in four of the 24 seed tubes that are telling me how many seeds per second are going by. Unfortunately, with a cover crop mix, it's really hard to get an average because of the density and the size of the seed is so different. Um, so I'm really just using this to tell me when I run out because if there's zero seeds flowing, no matter what the target rate is, it'll start beeping at me. Then I stop. And then I have to rebalance the, you know, from side to side, or if I'm completely out, then I come back and reload. And it'll also tell me how many acres I covered. So I put approximately a third of my total in that hopper right now. So I think I should cover 10 acres with everything set right. I'm going to go until I run out and I'll see how many acres I covered. And then I'll make an adjustment and try to get closer to that so I don't run out of seed before I cover all the 25 acres. I'll go back and uh, show... So this is what you see. There's a down pressure. There's a hydraulic system. It's a little complicated for one video. Oh, there's that book I was showing you before. It's a 750 grain drill, John Deere. It's probably 30 year old technology. It's pretty clever, but uh, it's, even the more modern ones use the same idea. There's a um, seed disc right there that cuts a slit in the ground. And this arm is under down pressure, hydraulic down pressure. It forces in the ground. And the slit will only go as deep as the difference between this gauge wheel, which rides on the ground, and the bottom of the slit. So that's how you adjust the depth of the seed trench. And once the seed drops, it comes down these tubes, right, from the box up here. And you adjust the width here, depending on the size, how many seeds you want to flow out is controlled by this mechanical lever here. And I'm on setting 12 right now, according to the book. What that does, it slides this, can, not cam, but cylinder back and forth to make this slit bigger or smaller. There's one of the light sensors right there on that tube. So then it comes down this tube and it drops through this seed tube into the slit. So that's how it gets in the ground. Oh, and then there's closing wheels behind it that, that compress that slit in the trench. And there's every seven and a half inches, there's another row. So there's 24 rows. So this is what the cover crop looks like mixed in the box. You see the peas, the soybeans, the sun hemp are those black... The predominant black ones in there, there's a few sunflowers, you know, not many. Um, there's not enough growing time left to really have the sunflowers bloom. They should have been in the ground, you know, two months ago, end of May, beginning of June, six weeks ago. But they'll grow, they'll provide some kind of diversity, biodiversity. As you see, the hopper's not very full. So I'm not putting much on per acre. You know, remember, I'm putting this uh, cover crop mix on, the sun help. Old soybeans, well, the spring soybeans, the spring peas, some sunflower. I think that's what's in there. And then in this box is the purple top turnip and some leftover bursine clover. And that just dribbles out onto the ground in front of those gauge wheels I mentioned before. And then it goes via a tube right in front of those gauge wheels and gets smushed into the ground. So those seeds, see this tube coming down here? It drops right in front of this gauge wheel. So as I'm driving along, that falls down. The gauge wheel smashes it into the soil and compresses it so it's got good contact. Because those seeds are so tiny, they don't need to be buried. They'll, they'll, as long as there's any moisture, they should go. And those turnips will get the size of a softball. And there was a couple of years where I came back the following spring, and they'll, they'll set up a three-foot-tall stem when they bolt with a big yellow flower on top of it. So it's pretty cool to see the whole field is just all these yellow flowers. Anyway, uh, that's part two. Maybe it'll be, I, my editor, my software is so old, I can't really edit videos. So I just shoot them one and done, one take. Hydraulic hose is all hooked up. Monitor's all hooked up to the drill. Tractor works. Wish me luck. Oh, and I started at eight o'clock this morning. Now it's almost 11. So it took me three hours to mess around, get this hooked up. And according to my dad's calculation, I should have had 18 acres done by now. Ha! <laughs> well, I'm just teasing you, Dad, if you watch this. Um, it just takes time. You know, it's part of, a, part of it, and there's really no way around it. And my argument is that, well, you, that those three hours, I, I worked just as hard then as I did other times. So that's part of it. And I just got to take it into account when I'm doing my little estimates here. All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.